And for that, uh, we call this Silent Sunday, amen, our Black History, amen, service, amen, this Sunday. We mix it with our youth, amen, and I just thoroughly enjoyed every part. Come on, let's give them a great round of applause one more time. Hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Amen. Now we're preparing, amen, for, amen, the part we all, amen, have continued to be waiting on. Hallelujah. But how many of y'all want to hear a word from the Lord? How many of y'all love the word? If you love the word, just begin to give God praise. Hallelujah. Someone said, I love the word. Amen. I have the distinct honor, amen, and privilege, amen, to introduce, amen, this season, dynamic woman of God. Hallelujah. On this Sunday morning. Someone shout amen. amen. The things that I could say and express, amen, she is definitely a trailblazer. She's a trendsetter. Hallelujah. She's a loving woman of God who truly loves God and the people, amen, that God has allowed her to pastor and shepherd. Someone shout amen. amen. This church, amen, we call her the realest because she has a real, genuine word to bring you out, to deliver you, to set you free in her own unique way. Hallelujah. But I believe as a woman of God begin to preach and declare, I believe, uh, I believe chains will, will fall off of you. I believe your mind will be regulated. I believe your mind can be renewed. Someone shout amen. amen. Ask, and I will ask everyone right now to please stand on their feet. As you stand on your feet, I want you to man, point your hand of authority to the woman of God. Hallelujah. And say, Pastor Latoya. Say, preach the word. Say, Pastor Harris. Say, teach the word. Say, demonstrate the word. Say, let them use you in a mighty way. In Jesus' name. Someone shout amen. Come on, at this time, amen, I bring to you, amen, Pastor Prophetess Latoya Harris. Come on, put your hands together as she come at this time. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, praise God, because some people don't like to praise God for people. Why don't you just praise God? Amen. Celebrate our God today. Celebrate our God today. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. He deserves all the honor. If y'all can back up to that song, I plead the blood, because we pleading the blood over everything around us. If y'all can play that song one more time, I plead the blood. Shout it with me. Say, I plead the blood. Say, I plead it over my family. Say, I plead it over my kids. Come on, I plead it over my finances. I apply it in every area of my life because the enemy can't come in. He can't get in your marriage. He can't get in your kids. I wish I had the right church on a Sunday morning. He can't get in your head. He can't get in your emotions. He can't play tricks with you no more. Amen. Because we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. He can't get in your emotions and your feelings. Have your up, down, in, out. I plead the blood. Tap your neighbor beside you and tell him, say, I plead the blood. Come on, tell him, say, I'm covered in the blood. If you don't have a right neighbor, find somebody else and tell him, say, I'm covered in the blood. Tell him, my church is covered in the blood. My marriage is covered in the blood. My finances are covered in the blood. You can't have my church. You can't have nothing that belongs to me. It means war. Do I got any victorious people in here that got a war mentality? Don't have these clothes on and you ain't ready to fight. And command every jealous spirit to get out of your house, out of your mind, and say, I plead it, the blood of Jesus. I plead it, 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 I plead it. Let me tell y'all something. Break it down just a little bit. The worst war we have is the war between each other. Okay, I'm talking early today. The greatest war we have is not with other people. Y'all don't want to talk, right? The greatest war we have is with each other. The moment we see somebody succeeding, y'all don't want to talk, right? Is the moment we try to pull them down. But I come against that spirit today. We're going to do this thing together. Husbands against wives. Wives against husbands. Mothers against daughters. Daughters against fathers. Sons against fathers. We plead the blood. Tell somebody we plead the blood. Say so there's going to be unity in my household. There's going to be unity in the church house. Turn it up and let's clap for 30 more seconds. Turn it up. Clap. 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 Come on, if you know it, the blood of Jesus works. Hey! 
the same. When people change God's blood, stay the same. You're a consistent force in my life, and I thank you for being stable. Let the people say this. Someone shout, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, shout it again. I plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. I won't be before you long. We're going to get out of here in a good time. But let's thank God for our guests and our visitors in the house of the Lord today. Amen. We thank God for his presence that is here. Thank you for stopping by the Kingdom Church to worship with us. Amen. God is a good God and he is greatly to be praised on today. You could have worshipped so many other places but you chose to worship here and we're glad to have you here. Amen. If you're sitting by somebody, look at them tell them, say, I'm glad you came to church today. If I can get a little more volume on here, amen. I'm glad you came today because you could have stayed at home after Valentine's. Praise the Lord. I got some messages this morning. We still Valentine's. I'm not, not, on, not on Jesus time. Let me tell you something. Amen. We had probably a little less than 24 hours and we made the best of that 24 hours. When I tell you every hour count to be back in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning to serve him because he is the one that keeps us together. Y'all don't want to say amen. Amen. It works when you have a three-strand cord. You, whoever, and God is in the middle. And when you leave God out the deal, amen, it's sure to have issues and problems. So, amen, we're so grateful for those of you all who chose to come out on this great Sunday. We hope you've enjoyed our Black History um, program. Let's clap and praise God and thank God for the youth department. Y'all can do better than all of those who work with our youth on a daily basis. Our dance teams, amen. Youth choir, thank you guys so much. Amen. We appreciate you all um, for working with them, all of the leaders. Your hard work is not in vain. Amen. I have a dual job this morning, and I have to talk to you about what well, we've been talking about it for the last month or so. Can anybody tell me what the three Ps are? Plan, Plan productivity, position, and productivity for those of you who are just joining in on us with our series. Um, let's clap and make a loud applause for our man of God, none other than Pastor Darius Harris, who looks like a king today. He is a king. Amen. I believe every man, there's a king in every man. Amen. Amen. And you, when you deal with a king, you'll no longer mess with peasants. I know I wasn't going to get no amen right there, but y'all should have been here Wednesday night. Lord Jesus. Pastor Harris broke it down. I, left, I laughed out of here so hard. Amen. He, he broke the word down where we could understand it. Amen. And he talked to us about being gullible women. Y'all won't say amen. 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 That, that I'm not going to go into his sermon. Amen. <laughs> amen. I'm not going to him, his sermon. Amen. But we thank God for our set man of God. Let's praise and thank God again for Pastor Darius Harris. Amen. Humble, humble, humble man of God. Amen. Humble man of God who loves, loves God. It's good to see the Martinez with us. Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us today. Amen. We're glad to have you on this um, great Sunday. We're going to go into the word of God and I'm going to talk like this for about 15 minutes. So those of y'all that like to write and like teaching, we're going to get this on today. But the three P's, we're talking about productivity, planning and positioning. All of those things go together if you want to be successful. Amen. And I have learned also that your success is not your neighbor's success. Can I just go right into the word today? What you deem to be successful is not um, what your neighbor may deem to be successful. So you cannot gauge your success off of your neighbor's success. Amen? Because number one, God has not given you even probably the same gifts and talents that they have to get a job done. So a lot of us, we deem successful as having a lot of money. Are y'all going to talk back to me? Successful is having a nice house. Successful is having a marriage that you think is all right, but if you was to get behind the four walls and find out what was really going on, 
Praise the name of the Lord. So we have things and we gauge our success on our neighbor's success. Amen. So I want to talk to you about success on today. Not only that, how to get what you want done in your life, how to become successful in the kingdom of God. Number one, I have learned that if you do not have an appetite for souls, your church should not be open. Thank you, Elder Wood. I'm going to say it again and let it digest for some of y'all today. The whole purpose for the church being open is that souls will come to Christ. Amen. And if we're open just because we want the biggest church, come on, y'all don't want to talk, right? Because God is closing churches every day. And we pray every day that the kingdom church name is not on the list. The Ichabod written on the doors of the church, meaning the glory of God has departed from this place. Amen. Churches are closing. Pastors are quitting. Y'all don't want to say amen. Y'all don't want to say amen, but 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 if you don't have an appetite for souls, then you don't grow. I have learned that God's way of doing things is the only reason he wants to create church is for souls, uh-huh. for souls to be saved, for souls to be delivered, for souls to be set free. So we're not here to have a fashion show. We're not here, amen, to know, be amongst the who's who's. We're not here to say we got the biggest church in Tyler, Texas. We are here if number one reason is to save souls from a burning hell. This generation don't even talk about hell no more because if y'all, if, if this generation knew what hell was really about, some stuff that we do, we would never do it again. Uh-huh. And fear of going to hell. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right but we've got a generation. I'm going to help y'all out today. Amen. Because we old school and we got a mix of new school. We got some old school saints. Holla out, church of God in Christ. Baptist, seeing me where you're in the house. Let me hear you, Pentecostal. Holy rollers. We got it all in one building because we're reaching, we're coupling the old school with the new school. You can't become so new school that you leave out the old school principles. And the principles was praying. The principles was fasting. The principles was living holy. That's why we don't see miracles like we need to see them because nobody wants to live holy anymore. We in a generation, y'all don't want to talk right. I got some amens and I, I, I like it. I'll keep talking. Well, God said don't judge me. No, we're not judging you. The Bible is judging you. The word of God is what we judge our life off of. I live off of the word of God. Y'all don't want to talk right. I breathe off of the word of God. The word of God is your bread. It's your life. It's your life being. But we have a generation who say I want to serve God without the Bible. I have to turn around. Wake some of y'all up. We, we read the word and then we say, well, well, God didn't really mean what he said he mean. It, it didn't really, we, we interpreted the scripture wrong. Yes, we grew up from the generation that may didn't know correct English, but they had the Holy Ghost. They may couldn't read, but they had the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is smarter than any education. The Holy Ghost is smarter than any revelation. Y'all don't want to talk hard. They And that's why, Lady Anne, we got a church that comes to church for entertainment, but they don't come to church for God. I wish I had the right church today. You didn't come here to be entertained like you at the movie theater eating your popcorn. You came to get a word from God. You came to hear worship. It's all right to dance, but don't let dancing just be where you stop it. It's all right to sing, but don't let singing be where you stop it. You got to get to the cross. You got to get to the altar. You got to lay some stuff down. So that you can live holy. No, 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 no. I'm defending the old ancestors. No, no, no. Everything they said may not have been true. Everything they taught may not have been biblical. But what I do know is there were more miracles then than there are now. Y'all don't want to talk right. What I do know is that we respected the men and the women of God. And we didn't talk behind their back. Because our parents taught us, you better not talk about the preacher. I don't care how you feel. And now we wonder why kids are dying at 20 years old because they have lack of respect for leadership. Honor thy father, thy mother, and your days will be long. Amen. So people are dying at age 20. Amen. And it's getting younger and younger. 
because we want to serve God without rules. That's why, Lord Jesus, you always, we want to serve him without, the Bible gives us a way of living. So when you alter the Bible to live how you want to live, let me tell you who you become. You become Satan's little cousin. Okay, well, let me tell you how to prove it to you. Well, in the Garden of Eden, when the serpent came upon Eve, he said he twisted the scriptures because God, he twisted God's word because God said, he said, do not eat of the tree of good or of, of any evil. And then the serpent came back and manipulated the word and say, well, God didn't really say, y'all don't want to talk right. He didn't really say this. What God was trying to say was, he didn't want you to be like him, that if you ate of this tree that you will have more knowledge than him. He flipped the words that came out of God's mouth. And sometimes as a generation, oh well, God, uh -huh, y'all don't want me to go here, but I'm going to go here. He didn't say homosexuality was a sin. We flipped the word. Y'all don't want to talk right. He didn't say lying was a sin. I didn't ask 30 people. He didn't say being a tailbearer was a sin. He didn't say, and we start saying what God didn't say. But my is, why are we trying to say, find a way to live wrong instead of trying to find a way to live right? I don't want to go to heaven on a maybe. I don't want to go to heaven on a one foot right in. You're not going to be perfect, but there are some things that you can do better. If you will really lift your hand, everybody ain't got to do it, and really agree that there's some changes that you can make in your life that you can do a little bit better. So we're dealing with a generation that if they're not entertained, they will not come to church. They get bored. They got other plans. They got other places to be. And the places that they're going is not even paying them. Y'all don't want to talk right. At least get paid for going. Y'all don't want to say it. Where you got to go? Where you got to go? And the reason it's changed is because our appetite has changed. We don't crave the, I love the word of God. When I start reading the word of God, every issue in my life, there's a scripture for it. I can open my Bible and my emotions get together when I read his word. Depression got to lift up for me when I read the word of God. And the devil don't want you to know his word. Because if you don't know his word, you cannot effectively fight him. If you don't know his word, you will stay stuck like Chuck. But I'm raising up, me and Pastor Harris, I believe God has given us a small percentage of the kingdom to raise up kings and queens in the body of Christ. Who says that I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I also know the word. We also operate in the prophetic, we also operate in deliverance. We're not dumb praisers. Amen. Know the word of God. In order to know the word of God, you got to read the word of God. If you don't like reading it, you got to at least put it on audio and hear it. If you don't like audio, at least come to church and let's hear the word of God. Can somebody shout amen today? So we're working with a generation that we're trying to force feed them the word of God. So when you feed them holiness, they start acting like an addict. You mean I got to stop doing what? No, no, no. Let me go to the church that's going to tell them grace is going to fix it all. Amen. Right. Amen. Grace can run out. Y'all don't want to believe that today. And even if grace don't run out, I'm going to prove it in the text in just a minute. Even if God's grace won't run out, but the grace to do things will run out. God will let you keep working and working and never see a harvest. I don't want to be on this earth another 40 years and God put me in punishment because I was disobedient. I'm going to prove it to y'all in just a minute. Because the word of God says he's the one that pulls up, pulls down. Promotion don't come from man, nor the north, the south, the east, the west. He's the one that promotes. So he will pull down one to exalt another. So if one person is disobedient, y'all don't want to talk right and don't want to do his will, he can pull them down and then raise up another. I'm going somewhere today. 
Listen, in our history, thank you, Elder Wood. In our history, the great woman we must know about and have heard about, Harriet Tuckman. Can somebody praise the Lord? There's so many great others. We got Martin Luther King. Praise God. There's so many, so many others who have, have led a great movement. And I'd, I'd be remiss to talk about this and not have black history and not tell you a little bit. Amen. But what I loved about Harriet Tubman is that once she got free, she couldn't stay free alone. She was willing to take a risk to go help some more people get out of bondage. So my question to you is, is when you get to your place of what you deem success, are you going to reach back and help a sister out? Are you going to reach back and help a young boy? Can God trust you to help a family member? Or will you get abundantly blessed and forget about everybody else? She could have said, Woo, I'm home scot free. I'm not risking my life no more. I'm not going down through the under railroad. I'm not going back down anymore. I'm free. The rest of them going to have to figure out how to get their way out. And that's a problem in our generation. One person get out and won't even show you the information. Oh, uh-huh, y'all don't want to even say amen. Won't even show you how to get out. So the greatest weapon is not on the outside, as I stated in about 30 minutes ago. But our greatest weapon is on the inside. Of destruction. You know you got something that'll work for somebody else. Why would you hold the information? Y'all don't want to say amen. And you see somebody toiling trying to get to the top. But because we're so competitive. And we don't want anybody to get there before us. And even if they get there before us, we don't want them on the same level. This is not everybody, but I'm addressing a spirit. And so you can have information that will help people out. But because you got a motive for getting them out, you won't give them the information. Well, I won't give it to them until they do this for me. That's called conditional. That's called manipulation. That's like me having a million dollars and I'm like, I can actually, you see me broke, I can actually show you how to make this million dollars, Davina. But because when you get this money, I want you to give it all to me, I'm not going to tell you. Because I got a plan behind the scene, I'm not going to show you how to get out. And that's how we think. But Harriet Tuckman, when people risk their lives to come help you out, y'all don't want to say amen. When people are already free and they turn around to come back and get you, how would you treat that person that went back through the trenches, that went back through the slavery, that went back through that type of thing to get just you out? So I admired her because when she got free, she made sure that other people and families got free as well. She took a risk. Anybody in here know about taking risk? Anybody know about taking risks? Not only that, to bring it into our plan position and productivity, she also had a strategy. And the reason that some of us are losing is because we do things without strategies. We try to do things and win without a plan. God told you you're going to be successful and you just run out there and just do however you think. But did you stop and ask God and say, God, give me a strategic plan. Show me how I'm going to get to this lady, Nisi. Show me how the words you've spoken on my life, how it's going to come to pass. Because it ain't going to come easy. So I got to have a strategy and I got to have a plan. So Harriet Tubman had a plan to bring a whole nation out. And she said, those that don't want to follow a plan, I'll take this gun and shoot you. Y'all don't want to say amen. Man, those are, that might get us all in trouble because you don't want to be quiet. And so she was also fearless because there are some people who rather make you die because they don't want to go. I'm getting ahead of myself. There are some people that rather you stay stuck with them than you progress and change. There are some people who want to stay stuck in a system uh-huh, and they don't want to let the only family member that they know Joshua to get them out. So they rather everybody crash and burn. What type of person are you that one person can probably help us all get out? But because you don't want to change, you rather let that person stay stuck with you. Don't make sense. Can one of us get out? Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, can one of us get out? Come on, talk to him. Say, can one of us at least get out of poverty? Can one of us get a college education?
then will there be a successful family where we have men and fathers raising their kids? I don't want to talk right. Mothers have hope. Can, can somebody do it right? She had a strategy. She had a plan to pull people out. What is your strategy? What plan has God given you? And if it's a God-given vision, you can't use your plans. You got to seek God for a strategy and pray and ask him for a plan on getting out because your plan may not be good enough. God knows the type of giants I'm getting ahead of myself. You're getting ready to have to face. And so he has a strategy and a plan to get you out of what you're in. They had such a strategy that they had code words. Can I talk about this just for a few minutes? They had code words that, that while they were on the slave, the slave place there on the grounds, they would start singing songs. And they would start humming songs, which was allowed. But what they did not understand, y'all don't want me to try to revelate it today, is that when you start praising God, the songs that they would sing, the master did not know that they were called songs. I'm trying to go somewhere. So when you start worshiping God, what the enemy does not know that my worship is a call to God. Y'all don't want to talk right today. When you start losing yourself and worshiping and praising God and singing songs of goodness and being thankful and being grateful, it's calls that send signals to the heaven that my child is in trouble and needs a way out. So they would sing this song, y'all. They would sing this song that said, we're on our way to Canaan. I don't can't tune up right now. We're on our way to Canaan. We're on our way to Canaan. But what they did not know that they wasn't talking about just Canaan. But when they would sing, we're on our way to Canaan, it really meant that we were on our way to Canada. Y'all don't want to say amen. So they had a strategy ultimate weapon and I'm going to get to the Bible so that I can reach everybody today so no one y'all just ride with me the greatest weapon that they had to get free was called secrecy some of us wouldn't have made it out because we tell everything Not for help, but so that we can get a strategy to get out. Amen. I'm not going to stay there long. When God is getting ready to bless you, sometimes you can't share it yet until you have it. Have you ever shared a testimony too early? Y'all don't want to say amen. And, and, and somehow, even though it was supposed to be yours, you added a little bit more disturbance and frequency and problems in the midst of your testimony because you told it to people who didn't want to see you succeed. Y'all don't want to say amen. You shared your plan and your vision too early. Come on, Joseph. You told the wrong people and your family members. You, you shared what God was doing for you to the wrong people. But the worst thing is the closest people to you should be the ones that should be excited for you. But sad to say. So you've got to learn sometimes to hold that information. And then when you testify, you can testify and say it's done. It ain't halfway complete. I'm living in the house now, so say whatever you want to say. I'm driving the car now. We in the church now. Say whatever you want to say. I'm blessed now. Some of y'all talk too much. I'm trying to help you. Well, I got a five-year goal. You don't share your vision plan with everybody. Because some people are not even interested. We got to learn to help people even if we don't get nothing out of it. 
Because guess what? If God told you to help them, guess what God remembers and he wrote it down. And it's not for man to bless you. He'll call somebody that never saw you a day in your life. And he'll speak your name in that spirit and say, I remember when she blessed this person and they didn't even say thank you. They wasn't even appreciative. And on the back end, God will pay you back. Why? How I know? Because I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. How when people get amnesia and they forget and they forget. Let's give an example that all you had was $20 and you gave them. Y'all don't want to talk right. Your last $20 and they took it like you was rich. Y'all don't want to talk right. They took it like you, you, you had something in the bank. They took it like you didn't need it. I don't care if it's $5. If somebody lets you borrow it, you get it back with the same intensity that you borrowed it with. Don't get, do you need this back? Yes, I need it. Whether I do or I don't. I got to get to the word to where I'm going. Thank y'all for pushing me this morning. But some stuff you got to conceal. Some stuff you got to hold on to. Some stuff you can't tell everybody because their faith level is not on your level. You telling God, that's it, Brianna, that God going to heal me. Then when I go back to the doctors, I'm prophesying right now that they won't find anything in me. But if you talk to a person that has your same disease, uh uh-huh, they have your same disease, they'll tell you, they'll sit in the doctor's office and tell you that I've been this way for 15 years, but baby, that ain't your story. God can work a miracle for me. I just got to get around the right people who believe that God can work miracles. I got to get in the right church that believes that God I feel the glory of God. I feel the glory of God. I feel the glory of God. When Lady Ann told us over a year ago, the doctor said they thought they saw cancer, I didn't flip my face. I looked at her and I said, I don't care what they say. Y'all don't want to talk about it. We're going to praise God until cancer dry up. We're going to let praise and worship. Don't you miss a service. You We're getting back to the old church with a new flavor. Where they would sit in church and they would get healed. Tumors would fall out. Y'all don't want to talk right. People would drop crutches. Blind eyes were open. We got time to play church. You can go to the movies all day if you want to, but that ain't going to help you. We need people that know how to help bring somebody else out. When Elder Jones a few weeks ago said, well, the doctor said this and that. We ain't flitting our face. Fear is not in us. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't even care what your symptoms are. Healed is your name. And he got out of the hospital within a week. Somebody ought to praise God for I see you to walk in. Notable miracles. Notable signs. Y'all messing up my message. Lady Shatarius testified Wednesday night that, that she went to the doctor and her blood pressure on both ends is normally three digits. But when she went, it was down to normal numbers. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? She say what you want to say. But we believe in God for the impossible. We believe in God to do what man cannot do. Anybody got something they believe in God to do that you know you can't do? Shake your neighbor and tell them, say, are you waiting on something, God, to do something for you that the doctors can't do? I come to tell you, encourage them, say, it can happen. Tell them, say, you in the house of miracles. You in the church of miracles. Hey, my elbow shy. God is healing somebody right now. He's healing somebody right now. Y'all quit hanging around people who suck the life out of you. Hanging around people who don't believe like you believe. Someone shout glory. God is healing someone's back right now. 
So he interrupts our services. He's, in, he's healing somebody's back right now. He's going down from the top all the way down, and he's healing someone right now. God is healing someone's mind right now. Thank you, Lord. When you don't know what to do, you just worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some stuff you got to hold on. You can't share it with the, with, with the wrong people. Because the wrong people will breed fear in you. I'm getting ahead of myself. They'll tell you what God can't do. And if they don't say nothing, it's just an res empty response. I walked in the door and, 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 and she told me, Lady Brianna, she looked me in my face and she said, the doctor said they checking my kidneys. I looked at her and I kept walking. God, you're healed. You got to get with people that got faith for you and not failure for you. I don't wish failure on nobody up in here. You got to get with people. Even, and some of y'all are so crazy. The person you don't like is the person you need. The person you don't even like is the person that got that miracle in their mouth. And you, 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 you the person you don't even, y'all don't even know. That's how the enemy works. Let me show you how the enemy works. He's a supplanter. I'm from my notes. He'll put stuff in your mind. He'll put it in your dreams. And you'll think it's from God. But it's the enemy. He'll tell, well, I had a dream that this one didn't like me and this and that. But that's a person that might have your breakthrough. You need to pray about that dream. That person might give you a new house. You need to pray about that and say, God, what are you really trying to show me? That this God divine connection that the enemy keeps trying to fight could be my way out. Some dreams you got to rebuke because it's a destiny connection. And if the enemy can grab your destiny connection and have you looking crazy at a person that can help you get out, you'll stay stuck like Chuck. Someone shout, there's miracles in the room. Come on, shout it again, there's miracles in the room. What happens when you believe? I still believe. Anybody still believe? What happens when you believe? What happens when you actually believe that God can do what he said he can do in your life? When you really start believing, things got to change in your household. It's got to change in your body. Do I got any believers today that say, I believe in God? God help me. For I hear at the moment, there's someone in here, I cannot get the correct name, but someone may know it, but it's a form of a disease where they say all of your body aches, your arms ache. Anybody know what it is? It came out not too long ago. It's a, a particular disease where every part of your body begins to ache. Fibromyalgia. There's someone in here who's been dealing with fibromyalgia. And the Lord God says, in this service today, I'm going to heal you. He said, because the root of it is stress. He said, the medication not going to work. He said, but the root of it is stress. And he said, when you relieve yourself of some of this extra stress, you're going to see the symptoms leave out of your body. You're going to see, I'm going to, I wish somebody will open your mouth and begin to praise God. I'm not going to call you out, but you know exactly who you are. Some days you get up, you can't walk. Some days, come on, there's pain all in your body. Some days, come on, it hurts just to get up out the bed. But God says, in this atmosphere today, I just healed you and I just set you free. Somebody ought to shout, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lady Anne, there's a rainbow over your head. And the Lord God says, this rainbow represents the promises that I have made to you. The Lord God says that you will not leave this earth without seeing the promises of God may manifest it in your life. I don't know what he promised you, but God said it's going to happen. If I can take about 30 people to look back and tell AS that God said it's going to happen.
said, say only if you believe. Come on, tell us, say only if you believe. So the word of the Lord for everyone in this house, God just said, he said, tell them ditto. He said, I'm making good on broken promises. I would praise God if I was you. I'm going to say it one more time. This is why we can't have church as usual. God says I'm making good on broken promises. Men have failed you, but I am God. I'm God. I'm God. I'm God. Men said they were going to do, but they didn't do. I'm God. And I cannot fail. If your neighbor is coherent, tap him and tell him, say he's God. And he cannot fail. Come on, talk to him, say he's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. If y'all will believe what I'm getting ready to say. And receive because the prophetic mantle is just dropped in this house. If y'all will receive what I'm getting ready to say and not take it as a cliche, but really believe what I'm getting ready to say. God told me to tell this church today that the worst is over. Oh, my God. I don't know, but release to your heart. You've been through the worst. The worst is over. The worst is over. You can believe it today. You can digest it today. You've been through the worst season of your life. And the best is yet to come.